Hey guys, my name is Jason with Mount Baker Mining and Metals, and every miner I've ever heard of has uh, at least one bucket of black sand concentrates or sulfides sitting around in the garage, probably pissing off your wife, um, and you just know there's just more gold in there, You maybe you can't pan any more out, or you got it from some really rich stuff, and you just haven't had a chance to go through it. Um, and so on today's video, I wanted to show you a method that I use uh, to determine how much value is left in some of our black sand uh, sulfides or concentrates. And it's essentially a modified fire assay. So we'll take a look at some sulfides and then we'll walk you through the process. Here's the stuff we're going to be playing with today. And I've got three different buckets. Uh, these are all kind of middlings off the shaker table I've been saving. Uh, not sure how much gold's in here. But it's, uh, it's mostly iron pyrite. You can see here, if we can get the camera to focus, um, it's, it's mostly iron pyrite. And uh, it came off some ore that had quite a bit of uh, electrum in it, the gold and silver mix uh, alloy. And so uh, we'll get uh, a pretty good sample of this stuff between the three of these buckets. And we'll smelt some down and see if we can recover any precious metals. Here's our sulfides. Uh, I went and kind of augered down the center of each one of those buckets all the way to the bottom and got a kind of a representative sample of all three of those buckets. And I've weighed out uh, exactly one kilogram, so I have a thousand grams of sulfides. And because these uh, are sulfides, uh, they don't uh, smelt very well. You got to convert them into oxides. So our next step is going to be roasting them. To roast these sulfides, I'm gonna try something a little bit different. Um, I'm gonna use our, our furnace like I've done in the past. Uh, but I went to the Goodwill and I bought a cheap little uh, cookie sheet here. And it was like a buck. So I'm gonna try that. Typically what I use is a cast iron frying pan. Uh, I'm a little worried that this is gonna warp and deform and, and uh, the heat might, uh, might not last, you know, keep the, the metal in good shape. So. We'll, uh, we'll try it, and if it doesn't work, we can always revert back to our frying pan. Here's the sulfides all spread out on a cookie sheet. And I've got about half of them. Uh, I'll do them in two batches to make sure that uh, it's easier to get it all exposed to the oxygen in the atmosphere when you have less material. And we'll get it heated up. Uh, we're going to try and reach about 1,000 or 1,200 degrees Fahrenheit. And uh, I'm just going to get a spatula and stir them around and mix them up until, uh, until the sulfur all burns off. All right, we got our batch finished roasting. Uh, there's our full kilogram of material. And it's still real hot. Once it cools down, it kind of turns a red, rusty color. Um, and the cookie sheet, there's a couple good advantages to the cookie sheet, but one uh, major disadvantage, it fell apart uh, after the second roast. And as it was cooling down, it was cracking and breaking, and it, I got all the material in there, but boy, it, it fell apart just right at the last second. So. Um, the, the cookie sheet's probably not the best way to go, but it was really nice having a lot of surface area. I could move stuff around, whereas in the frying pan, you're pretty confined to a, a small space. So um, anyway, a little more work to be done there, but the point is we got all our stuff roasted and we're ready to smelt. I wanted to get our roasted sulfides weighed again. The tear weight on this stainless steel bin is 460 grams, and with the sulfides, it's about... 1,210 grams. So if my math's right, I think we lost about 250 grams worth of weight when we uh, when we roasted those sulfides. Here's the flux we're going to use. Um, and I've done some videos on a bunch of different flux recipes. And one of the best is, is Chapman's. Um, it's easy. You can buy it already mixed. Um, and so we have uh, roughly about 750 grams of material there. So I'm going to weigh out about, uh, I don't know, 1,500, 1,700 grams of this stuff. And we'll mix it up in our number 12 crucible. And we'll put her in our furnace and get to smelting. Okay, our final tally was uh, about 1,500 grams of Chapman flux. Here's our number 12 crucible. 
and I've put uh, 75 grams of lead in the bottom there as a collector metal. And I've pretty much convinced myself, I did another video series um, experimenting with different collector metals, and I've pretty much convinced myself that if you put your collector metal right at the bottom of the crucible like that, um, you get a really high percentage of gold recovery. So um, we're going to put it at the bottom. I think as uh, the material melts, becomes liquid and molten, and all the convection currents in there and everything, get all the little pieces of metal mixed in and uh, end up touching that collector metal blob at the bottom of the crucible at some point. And I think as soon as any little chunk of, of molten metal touches that collector metal blob at the bottom, it, uh, it sucks right into it. So that's my theory on how you get such high recovery, even though your collector metal isn't uh, interacting with the whole charge uh, during the smelt. So we'll let this cool down behind me and uh, one of the important things is when you're using lead as a collector metal, lead has a really, really low melting point. So you got to let that cool down a long, long ways uh, before you try and knock it out of there because if you, if you turn it over and the lead's still molten, you just get lead splashed everywhere. So you don't want to do that. Um, and the other thing I forgot to mention when I was loading the crucible is if you noticed, I only loaded the crucible, I, I left about uh, two or three inches um, of room in there uh, for the crucible because as it heats especially right as everything just becomes molten with Chapman's flux it tends to expand and, and that crucible filled up and it it's expanded all the way to about a, an inch from the lip so um, you want to make sure you leave some room in your crucibles for expansion because uh, it'll it'll expand all the way up and overflow out of your crucible um, so those are a couple tips when uh, when this cools down we'll knock it out of there and check our uh, our lead bead All right, so we got a little problem here. We got our, our slag over here, um, which is nice and glassy and broke off real nice. And then we have our matte phase here. This is, this is uh, the sulfides. I guess I didn't roast it long enough. And we got a, a little bit of sulfide that didn't end up getting all oxidized. Um, and then we have our lead bead here. So um, I, gotta, I gotta crush this up, roast it again, fully oxidize it, re-smelt it with the lead button and uh, and then we can cupel our lead. So 
let me go do that and uh, and see. I want because this will this will actually hold some gold and silver. Um, I proved that uh, a couple of videos ago, and we tested out some different uh, smelting fluxes. So I want to get rid of this. I want to fully oxidize it. So I'll crush it up, get uh, get it down fairly fine, and then uh, re roast it. So I actually uh, just thought about it for a second, and I changed my mind. I'm gonna cupel this lead button and see how much gold and silver we get, and then I'm gonna roast the mat independent, re-smelt it, and then see how much gold is in the in the mat, um, gold and silver. So uh, we'll take our first lead button. It ends up being about 60 grams, so we lost about 15 grams to the mat. Um, so let's get this cupelled, see if we got any gold and silver. And then, uh, and then we'll reprocess the mat and see if we lost any in the in the mat. There's our little cupel with our lead button in it, and we got a 60 gram button and a cupel that'll do 69 grams worth of lead, so it's going to be close. Um, and obviously, this is super way overkill for cupelling, um, but right now it's all I got. So uh, we're going to do a little tiny cupel and a great big furnace. Here's our lead in the cupel, and the temperature in the furnace is right about 1900 degrees. Uh, the lead oxide starts to become liquid at about 1750 and begins to slough off and absorb uh, in the cupel. And as this process, a precious metal button. And so here's our, our little bead, and it's really silver in color. Uh, which tells me that it's less than 50% gold. Um, but let's see if we can get a weight on it. It's pretty small. Okay, let's see if I can get this. Point. Oh, five grams is what that little guy weighs. So here's our mat. Uh, I've broken it open so we can take a look. and. You can see it's got that dull gray, bluish gray. Um, I can tell this actually has a lot of lead in it uh, just by the color and uh, the way it broke. It was just a dull thud, uh, very similar to Galena. And our mat ends up weighing about 65 grams. So here's our mat. I got it crushed down to 20 mesh minus. And uh, so now we'll get it roasting and drive off the rest of the sulfur. So here's the pour from uh, our mat. So we'll get that cooled down and check out the lead button. And here's the little lead button after uh, re-roasting our mat phase that we got. And you can see the, the metal goes right down to the, the slide goes right down to the metal. There's no mat in this one. And so uh, we should now have all the precious metals in uh, that first little button and then in this lead here. So we'll get this cupelled, cleaned up and cupelled and uh, get the get the bead weighed. And here's the bead from our mat. And it's quite a bit smaller, I think, than the, the original bead, but it looks like it might be a little bit more yellow, um, but it could still be hot. So let's pull it out of there and uh, we'll take a look, get it cooled down. Okay, here's our two little beads. The one on the right is from the original lead button from the first smelt, and the one on the left is from reprocessing the mat. And together they weigh 0 0.06 grams. All right, so here's the kind of back of the envelope calculation I do for my stuff. Um, in this situation, I weighed those buckets. We ended up with 38 kilograms of material total. And we smelted one kilogram and ended up with 0 0.06 grams of very silver material. And so if you multiply that by 1,000 um, kilograms in a ton, you get 60 grams per ton of silver stuff. Converting our 38 kilograms of material into tons, we have 0 0.038 tons. And if you multiply 60 grams per ton, in all those buckets, there's 2.28 grams worth of stuff of precious metals. I know that about uh, an alloy of half silver and half gold is pretty silver in color. And so if best case scenario, it's half gold, in those 38 kilograms, we have 1.14 grams of gold. And if it's a quarter gold, 
we only have 0.57 grams. So in, in those buckets, in all 38 kilograms, we may have $50 worth of gold. The silver is worth nothing, essentially. Um, and so by that calculation, those three buckets aren't worth me saving at all. I'm probably going to spread them on the road or dump them in the ditch or something, get rid of them. Um, but at least I know now, just real quick, back of the envelope, okay, there's not enough precious metals in there for worth saving, and so I can get it out of my way and out of the garage and, and make my wife happy. So um, that's kind of just in a nutshell how I like to uh, sample material that I have laying around. And it gives you, it's not a professional assay, but it gives you a really good idea of what you got and if you want to hold on to it for longer or just ditch it. So I hope you guys enjoyed the video. Maybe you learned something and uh, hopefully you can apply it to what you have going on uh, with your gold projects. So again, thanks for watching and we'll see you on the next one.